Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is George Ann. I'm the, the marketing director for Escapees RV Club. And I'm here today with Paul Unmack, who is the creator of the ARP Control. It's a wonderful device for your RV fridge to, um, watch. I'll let him explain a little bit more about what it does in just a moment. Um, but again, thank you all for joining us today. And make sure that as you have some questions while Paul's speaking, you take a moment to jot them down in the Q&A window or in our chat window. And during the live Q&A at the end of this presentation, we'll get back to those. Paul, would you like to take a moment to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Paul Unmack, and I'm a professional engineer. My expertise is in control systems. Uh, my wife's a professional engineer also, and her expertise is in ammonia pressure vessels and your refrigerator is an ammonia pressure vessel. And again, if you have any questions as we go along, make sure that you use the Q&A option at the bottom of your screen or the chat option to the side, and that way we can make sure we get to your questions at the end of the presentation. Paul, would you like to get started? Okay, well, I wanna thank you all for attending, and I've got a message on my screen that says that my internet connection's unstable, so, uh, hopefully it doesn't reflect on my personal stability. Uh, so if, if I don't happen to get something, please send us an email by using our contact us form. If I don't answer your questions or you need to seek more information, our website is www.arprv.com. So, Moving right along, we're gonna talk about the efficiency of the fridge. And what I'm gonna do is, is give a very brief introduction to how the refrigerator works to better understand how the efficiency plays into the operation of the refrigerator. Okay, so what I have here is, is I've got a Dometic absorption refrigerator and both Dometic and Norcold refrigerators are made identical. Um, and so the absorption refrigerator basically uses a heat source and the heat source is what generates the refriger refrigerant. And you, you guys probably recognize this unit here and some of you may even know how to operate it. This is a percolator coffee pot and it's exactly what the heat does inside the cooling unit. Inside this area of the cooling unit right here is a percolator pump and the solution of water and ammonia that's in the holding tank right here is heated. The ammonia boils at a lower temperature than water and the ammonia gas is separated from the water by boiling it. The ammonia gas rises up through the system here and the water in the system drops down through the percolator pump. So the, that explains the basic operation of the fridge and how heat causes the refrigeration cycle to work. Now, regarding efficiency, the efficiency of the refrigerator is vastly improved when what's called the absorber coils right here are kept at a lower temperature. The absorber coils are named the absorber coils because it's where the ammonia that's been separated in the boiler assembly is reabsorbed back in the water to continue the cycle. And again, you see that these absorber coils drop down into this holding tank and the holding tank's connected to the boiler assembly. So regarding efficiency, um, naturally, it's of, of great importance that the boiler assembly is working properly, and that's what the ARP control does, is it monitors the boiler assembly. But what we're gonna focus on is, is the fan controller part of the ARP control today, because in combination with, with monitoring the boiler temperature, the fan control vastly increases the efficiency of the refrigerator. So, You'll recognize, here's my door from my RV, from my refrigerator, and you'll, most all RVs have this exact same kind of setup where you have a set of louvers where air is able to get into the cooling unit compartment. 
because naturally the heat needs to be rejected from the cooling unit for it to operate efficiently. And in the refrigeration installations and RVs that have roof vents, uh, they do a pretty good job on their, their own of getting rid of their heat because they have what's called the chimney effect, and that is the hot air rising will pull in cool air at the bottom. So what we do to increase efficiency is, is we, we mount a blower type fan on the door so that the door, the, the air is being pulled directly from outside the RV. And that is, is what really helps with increasing efficiency. Now, I mentioned the traditional installation where there's a roof vent. Also in slide outs and some other applications, both of the vents are on the side of the RV. You'll have a lower vent like this on the side, and then you'll have another vent up above that's on the side. Those applications suffer terribly in hot weather because they do not develop what's called that chimney effect and they tend to stagnate and the cooling unit overheats. Now, again, the, being an engineer, I don't wanna overwhelm you, but I just love sharing the knowledge that I have. The absorption of the ammonia in the absorber coil is it's called an exothermic process. So when ammonia is reabsorbed back into water, it gives off heat, hence exothermic. The cooler the absorber coils are, the more efficient the refrigerator is. And that's why we mount our fan so that it's on the door, literally blowing on the absorber coils. That also brings the cool air in the bottom, and which again will naturally cause the heat to rise and go out the top. So I've covered in a very short period of time here an awful lot of information. And I'd like you guys to start asking me questions. And if there's, there's anything that needs to be cleared up, I'd be glad to do so. Okay, well, I don't see any questions just yet, but one that I have from listening to you. Um, so you talked about mounting the extra fan onto the door. Uh, I'm assuming it looks like it's probably battery, battery operated. Is that correct? No, it's powered by the 12 volt uh, coach battery okay. that runs the refrigerator. Okay, and so do you, with that in mind, do you have any suggestions on, like, for so example, it, it's, go ahead, you can go ahead. Well, it, it, the, 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 fans, the fans that we're using, I, my, my connection's really bad here, so I hope I don't sound like I'm interrupting. Okay. Uh, the, the fans that we use are very low amperage, so they, they draw very little power from your, your coach batteries. Uh, in addition, the, that when they're on the, uh, when the ARP controls powering them, they only run when, when it's necessary to use the fans. So it's, it's an energy saving feature. Okay. Um, what kind of fan do you suggest people use? I've seen some articles in the past that may have actually been yours even talk about using the fans that are often put into computers or other type, other ones like that. Do you have any advice on the particular type of fan or where they could find one that would work for the purpose you're suggesting? That, that's a great question because the manufacturers are, are presently using the computer fan or what is also in the trade name is a muffin fan. Uh, the muffin fan doesn't work as well as a squirrel cage fan. And I'm informed this is not a squirrel cage fan, it's a gerbil cage fan, because a squirrel can't get into it. So, <laughs> uh, we are the importers of these fans, uh, and the reason that we use the particular fan we're using is, is the low power and high volume. Uh, you can, we, we recommend a blower fan, and there are blower fans out on the market. You can go out and take a, and, and, and use any of these blower fans. Again, the big issue is, is that these fans are easy to mount to the door so that they can pull in the, the cool air from outside. And because they, the exhaust is at a 90 degree angle, it blows it up. On, on the upper vent for the 
slide out application, the fan would be mounted so that it's sucking from inside the compartment and blowing it right out the door. It also helps keep your slide out in hot weather be a lot cooler because we've had a lot of reports from people that their slide outs actually get exceedingly hot when it's over 90 degrees outside and, and the fridge doesn't have proper ventilation. So speaking of ventilation, I'm sure, especially with that vent facing the exterior of the RV, there are probably some concerns with dust and debris and that sort of thing um, building up in there. How often do you recommend people check that and clear it out? We clean ours out annually. We, we do an annual maintenance to our, our camper and we go in with, with a, just a regular vacuum cleaner and suck out all the spiders and, and dust and leaves and so on. <laughs> um, so whenever you're doing that annual maintenance, what, um, what other types of things do you do regard, in regards to your refrigerator or your appliances um, for that annual maintenance check? Things you might recommend other people do to keep their stuff running? Well, uh, we live in a dry climate. So the only thing that we do as a result is, is suck the uh, uh, debris out. Um, people that are living in, in wetter climates, like Texas, <laughs> uh, there's, a, there's a baffle inside the flue tube. What you do is, is you remove this cap from the top of the flue Oops, there's a, there's a baffle on the top of the flue, and if this baffle's not in there, it can cause problems while driving, blowing out the flame. But there's, there's a, the, this diffuser or baffle is inside the flue. That needs to be removed, and then you use a, a bottle brush, or what's good is a 12-gauge shotgun cleaner, and you, you run it up and down the flue to clean any debris out of the flue. And we recommend opening, I don't know if you can see the burner assembly down here, opening the burner assembly, and it's kind of a two person job. One person sits down with a vacuum cleaner and sucks the debris that's coming down the flue as you run the bottle brush up and down it. There's so many moving parts to that I didn't even realize were accessible. <laughs> uh, it can actually be very difficult to get to this part of the refrigerator at times. Uh, as you can see, it, it, you know, it, it, it kind of has to be pieced back together. And this is the best situation right here because it's right in front of me. So we do have a question from Lynn now. She says that she has a 2014 Heartland Sundance Norcold model 1210 double door with the temp in the freezer at zero degrees and the temp in the refrigerator is at 32. How can she regulate the temperature differential? She also has fans in the top part of the unit. And for reference, she lives in Colorado. Oh, okay. Uh in other words, she's freezing the food in the refrigerator, it sounds like, uh, if I understood correctly. Um, I, I'm assuming that she has tried to change the temperature setting on the refrigerator. I don't have a confirmation on that, but I'll, I'll, I'll let you know if she answers in. Well, if, if the there's what's called a thermistor inside the refrigerator that, that monitors the temperature and turns on and off the refrigerator uh, when, to keep regulate the temperature inside the refrigerated space. And if that thermistor fails, then what the refrigerator will do is run full time and it'll do what she is, is mentioning. Um, one of the best things she can do is, is, is send me an email with this so that I can get some more information from her to help her fix it. Okay. Um, and she did say that it looks like, yes, the, the question was about changing the temperature. Um, but I'm going to send her a message right now and let her know that she can contact you via the uh, contact us form on your website. So if, if she's tried changing her temperature to a higher temperature setting and she's had no effect, then she most likely has had a failure or failure of her thermistor, but there's some ways to check that on that particular refrigerator. 
Okay. Um, and while we're talking about some of this, one of the things that you and I were talking about before we before we went live was the um, device that you created to help with some of these issues with um, with RV refrigerators. Would you take a moment to talk about that device a little bit, the the control, um, while we wait for more questions to come in? You bet. Um, it's my pleasure to talk about what we invented. Um, what what we invented monitors, as I said, the boiler temperature of the refrigerator. And by, by monitoring the boiler temperature of the refrigerator, uh, you increase the safety, the reliability, and efficiency of the refrigerator. The, one of the big issues with these refrigerators is, is they cannot be operated off level, for example. As you can see, all of the tubing slopes down, and that's because the ammonia will rise up because it's, it's a gas and it's turned back into liquid up above in the condenser. And when the refrigerator, for example, is off level, the ammonia will pool inside the cooling unit tubing back to the boiler. And when it doesn't get back to the boiler, the system kit stops. Two things happen. Number one, it goes in to destroy the system which causes the failure and ultimate rupture of the cooling unit, which results in fires. In addition, when the system quits running, the heat that goes into the boiler assembly will actually get inside the refrigerator and it'll cause the refrigerator to start warming inside. So our control, before we even produced the fan control, we got a lot of people commenting on how much more efficient the refrigerator was. And the reason being was is because our controller was turning off the refrigerator when it wasn't producing refrigerant. And it automatically restarted the refrigerator when it could. So they didn't see big temperature swings, for instance, when they were traveling. And that, that's one of the areas where, where damage is done to the refrigerator is when driving, you know, especially up steep hills. So when, when stagnation, which is another big subject we won't get into, but when stagnation occurs to the RVs, and uh, believe me, this little fan will not overpower our mother, and that is Mother Nature. Mother, mother Nature wins every time. All right, well, um, while, you were, while you were chatting, or while you were discussing that, Lynn did uh, come back with another question about this situation. So what she said is that her thermistor has been changed. Would raising the position help with the differential? Uh, yes, raising the position. Actually, raising the position puts it into a warmer area of the refrigerator. What you want to do is, what she really wants to do is lower the thermistor because the intention is, is to get the thermistor down to where it's cooler, cold air sinks, hot air rises. So you want to move the thermistor down so that it's in a cooler part of the refrigerator. Therefore, the refrigerator will turn off sooner. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so Roland has also asked, talking about um, operating a refrigerator off level, how many degrees off level um, can the unit be and continue to function? Uh, the manufacturers claim that you can operate them at three degrees off level. And what we found is, is that's completely incorrect. We did not set up for a demonstration with this cooling unit today. We could do that on another seminar if we'd like, but we've got this high tech device right here, a two by four. And I don't think you can see the bottom of this refrigerator but we will tilt this refrigerator, which is what we did at the escapades with this exact two by four. And at three degrees off level, the refrigerator will overheat and the RP control will turn off the refrigerator. It takes six minutes from the time I tilt this off level till the refrigerator overheats. Does this, Video conferencing have the ability to share screens? It does, yes. 
Oh, okay, we could do a demonstration on a on a, another video conference on because we can we can take and monitor this cooling unit in real time, and you can see the actual boiler overheat and our control turn it off. Um, I don't want to sound deceptive about how far off level that it can be operated, but it's not. There, there's not a given answer to that question because there's a lot of variables that affect it, uh, which include the ambient temperature. At a lower ambient temperature, the refrigerator can operate much further off level. It depends on the orientation of the refrigerator in the, in the compartment because refrigerator can, for instance, this can be tilted way far for, forward and it'll operate just fine. So in this plane, it can be moved quite a bit, but in this plane, it can't. It can, it can withstand operating further off level if we tilt it the other way. The problem is, is that if I tell you a level that you can't operate it at and say, well, yeah, that's safe, something's gonna come along like the fact that your cooling unit compartment is stagnated, it's too hot in the cooling unit compartment, and it's gonna overheat. The, the short answer to this question is, is the only way to know if, if there's a problem is, is to monitor the boiler temperature. That's why ASME code specifies that all fired boilers, which this is a fired boiler, shall have either pressure and or thermal monitoring. So the RV refrigerator is one of the few fired pressure vessels that you'll ever find, or, or it's the only one to my knowledge, that has no thermal protection on it. That's good Unless to know. it has the ARP control. Um, Roland, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> sorry about that. Roland made a good point that it sounds like the unit should not be operated when the RV is moving because if three degrees is that very slight tilt there, you could probably hit a bump in the road and get it up farther off than that. <laughs> Uh, uh, the units can be operated while driving. Uh, again, I, I, I'm not a salesman, I'm just practical. They really need an ARP control on them to monitor the boiler temperature because you don't know what the boiler temperature is otherwise. Uh, the big issue that I see with driving, and again, I, I drive with my refrigerator on but I also have my control so that it turns off the refrigerator if it overheats. But uh, I, I like to have a cold beverage at the end of the day. <laughs> so, you know, it's uh, ordinarily, I would say that most of the time driving will not affect the refrigerator, but it's things like if you get a flat tire and you pull over on the shoulder, you're not thinking of turning off your refrigerator. Uh, when we were at the Congress uh, Escapees Park this last winter, uh, there was a gentleman that had jacked up his RV to work on the suspension, and he had not turned off his refrigerator, and his refrigerator was overheating as a result. So again, it's, it's a, a, a safety device, really. Um, you know, RV, the newer RV refrigerators are more sensitive to the off-level damage than the older ones, which is contrary to uh, RV industry tells you. Um, so someone has made a good point. They're brand new to RVing, and it looks like they hopped on maybe just a minute or so later, and uh, they actually don't know what we're looking at. So I, clearly it's the back of the refrigerator, but would you mind taking a moment to explain what some of those components are so that people who maybe haven't had the chance to really get in, get familiar with the equipment inside their RV know what all you're talking about? You bet. Okay, let's get it back level. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, with my high tech device here. <laughs> um, what's gonna happen is, is you're gonna have this door on the side of your RV, and you undo the latches, and when you open this door, you're gonna probably see from about here down when you look inside. So this set of tubing is called the cooling unit. 
meaning that it's what actually does the cooling inside the refrigerator. When you open your door, you'll see your, your holding tank here, which is what holds a mixture of ammonia and water. From the bottom of the holding tank, the tube runs over to the boiler assembly, which the boiler assembly has a burner on the bottom and it has an electric heater so it can run on either propane or shore power. The electric heat or the LP gas, whichever is in use, all it does is it boils the propane, boils the solution, and what it does is it separates the ammonia from it. And the ammonia turns to gas and rises up and goes into the refrigerator to perform the refrigeration process. The water, on the other hand, that's separated from the ammonia comes into the top of this set of absorber coils, and the water runs down, and after the the ammonia has pulled the heat out of the refrigerated space. It gets reabsorbed into the water in the absorber coils. And this is actually where the heat is rejected that has been taken out of the inside of the refrigerator. Any questions? I think that's a pretty good explanation. Um, so thank you for that, definitely. And this is actually pretty similar to how, aside from the ammonia parts, similar to how most residential refrigerators work as well, just maybe different chemicals instead of ammonia. Correct? Uh, every single refrigeration process works on the same principle. Okay, yeah. And the same, the principle is, is if you pour water in your hand, the water will evaporate. The ev evaporation of the water absorbs energy out of your hand, so your hand gets cold. So, so your refrigerator, both residential refrigerators and absorption type refrigerators are simply evaporating a fluid to cause the refrigeration inside the refrigerator. The difference being is, is that a residential refrigerator has a compressor and the compressor is forcing the fluid through an orifice and when it expands, it evaporates and that evaporation absorbs the heat inside the refrigerator. Okay. Now, I hate to use the word absorb too liberally here because uh, it gets confused because I should say not that the evaporation absorbs, I should say it removes the heat to keep it con from confusing with an absorption type refrigerator where absorption in the absorption refrigerator means to absorb the ammonia back into the liquid water. And so with that in mind, I know that there are a handful of RVers out there who have opted to, um, to bypass the standard RV fridge and put a residential refrigerator into their RV. Do you have any advice on how they can improve efficiency um, in their situations? Well, it's, it's the same principle of, of using fans. Uh, a lot of the residential refrigerator installations I've seen have, have been pretty bad. And when I say bad, I mean, you, you could look underneath the refrigerator and look out the back, you know, out, out through this vent and, you know, see the world. So uh, the, the residential refrigerator needs to reject its heat just like the absorption refrigerator. And if you don't have proper ventilation for the refrigerator, then it becomes an issue. And a typical residential refrigerator, you probably can hear mine running in the background now. <laughs> uh, a typical residential refrigerator pulls its air in on the bottom of the refrigerator facing the front. And so therefore it's a problem in an RV because you, 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 the RV is not designed to operate that way. So you need really to have some special ducting for, for moving the air over the, the residential type refrigerator. Okay, that's a really good point. I guess I hadn't actually thought about that and picturing some of the RVs I've seen that have them, they're usually in, they're, they're the biggest thing in the kitchen, so there's not a lot of open space around them for air to circulate, even if the person's not aware of some of the, the airflow concerns. Like There's really not a lot of room for fresh air to come in and cool that the, off. The problem is, the, the problem is, is the retro, 
and the the fact that the residential refrigerator is designed to be in the kitchen of the house versus being in an RV where the RV living space should be separated from the outside space. So again, it's a, it, 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 there's a lot of challenges uh, and, and a lot of people don't think of this that a residential refrigerator is, is great in a residence, but it's not designed to be bouncing down a road. Mm -hmm. And in addition, the residential refrigerator is designed to work in a controlled environment. In other words, the assumption made when the refrigerator is designed is, is that the house is going to be at around 72 degrees Fahrenheit. And if the house becomes much hotter than that, uh, you start losing efficiency. So therefore, again, if, if your RV is not, if it's getting very hot inside, you lose a lot of efficiency as a result because the refrigerator is not designed to be working in that environment. Um, actually, you know, I, I want to say a, an important point right now is, is that people have been forced to, to go to seek good solutions to their problems. And until we patented the ARP control, I will be openly, I'll, I'll, I'll openly admit that the best solution to a lot of the problems with these refrigerators was to replace them with a residential refrigerator if and only if you have the ability to power them. So the good news is, is that because we patented this control, refrigerate, the absorption refrigerator can be monitored properly now and it prevents operator error. The absorption refrigerator is the best refrigerator for an RV because you don't have the ability to carry the amount of energy to properly run the refrigerator unless you've got a big solar array or you have a whole lot of batteries. A propane tank holds a lot of energy very economically and that's why absorption refrigerators are used. Good to know. Um, so Roland has asked, are the leaking and failures caused mostly by the overheating? And if so, to what extent does your control extend the life of the unit? Uh, I like that question a lot. <laughs> First listening. of all, <laughs> we have two, two Cervell type residential refrigerators in a cabin in Southern California. Both of those refrigerators are absorption refrigerators. Both of those refrigerators were made in 1937, and both of them are still alive today. So the absorption refrigerator is an exceedingly dependable refrigeration cycle because there's no mechanical parts to wear out. There's no pumps or anything to wear out. So the reliability, this should answer the reliability issue in addition to the fact it also answers why I designed my product because I had to ask myself, why is it that a 1937 refrigerator is still operating to this day and I've been through four or five RV refrigerators? Well, the answer is the dynamics of driving. It, it is that simple. So let's move on to the other part of this question. And I'm looking around here for my cutaway of my boiler. There it is. There's my cutaway of a boiler. So to answer the question on the reliability issue is, is this, as I mentioned in the boiler assembly, which this is a cutaway of, this is what's inside here. These are the electric heaters that, that heat the refrigeration, the, the fluids. And this is the top of the pump tube. Can you guys see that? get a thumbs up. <laughs> um, as I said, the water drops down and it comes, this is called an annular tube, and the, the fluid from the holding tank enters through the center tube and the water returns back through this outer tube. It drops down by gravity around and out and it comes actually back in and I don't know if you can see that there's a very small tube right here that comes back into the top of this absorber coil, and that's where the water comes in. So 
The reason I got into all this plumbing is, is that because ammonia is driving this process, when you don't get ammonia in, you quit pumping the water, the water quits flowing down through this tube past the heaters and out right here. At that point, the temperature inside the boiler rises to the boiling point of the water. And when the temperature rises to the boiling point of the water, it starts turning the water to steam. And there's a rust inhibitor inside the, the cooling unit called sodium chromate. When the water evaporates, it concentrates the sodium chromate, and the sodium chromate precipitates out of solution. When the sodium chromate precipitates out of solution, it won't go back into the solution. It goes through a metamorphosis and it is no longer water soluble. So you lose your rust inhibitor, and I don't think you can see on this, but, but this cutaway of a boiler is all rust pitted in here. And the reason it's rust pitted is, is that it lost its sodium chromate and the ammonia attacks the steel and it corrodes from the inside out. And that's why they break. This boiler assembly came off of a Norcold 1200 refrigerator. Uh, we sold the gentleman an ARP control and the gentleman brought the ARP control back in the morning because overnight this refrigerator failed. It, it, it actually burst and he was lucky not to have a fire. And he, he cut this boiler assembly out. Again, we, we bring this to all of our rallies where people can see the corrosion from inside here. So the long and short of it is, is that the failure of the refrigerator has to do with breaking down the rust inhibitor, which keeps the ammonia from attacking the steel because as soon as the ammonia can attack the steel, it corrodes from the end out, the refrigerator's done. And that's why there's ruptures. There's, there's 350 PSI of pressure inside this refrigerator. Uh, that's an awful lot of pressure. All right, well, it looks like at this point, we don't have any more questions. Thank you to everybody who has chimed in and given us some, some more information to cover for you. Um, and I, I agree, Paul, I think that we should have another another webinar in the next couple of weeks or so about some of these other things that need a little bit more detailed coverage. And for any of you who have some more questions that maybe you weren't quite comfortable asking here, you're welcome to reach out to Paul through his website. You might be able to see it in the background of his, uh, of his video there. Um, but it's also www.arprv.com. And, um, and there's a contact us form on there you can use to reach out to him more specifically about some of these things. Um, and like he said, for several, for several of the questions we've gotten so far, some of the, the intricacies of the information that's needed might be a little bit easier to handle via email instead of doing it in a situation like this. Um, but again, thank you all for joining us this morning. I hope that you have gotten a great amount of information. And um, for those that maybe missed part of it, either at the beginning or the end, which if they missed the end, we'll be talking to you right now anyway. But um, if you missed any of it, we're actually going to edit, we've been recording this, and we're going to edit the recording and put it up on the Escape Bees RV Club YouTube channel later today so that you can watch the presentation in its entirety. And in the notes with that video, we'll make sure we include some of the things that he suggested, such as the gerbil fan, not the squirrel fan, and um, his website and a few other things that have, have come up. And we'll also link, Paul has written several articles for our magazine, for the Escape Bees RV Club magazine. And we'll put a link to those articles there as well, so you can read some of the other information that he shared about our um, RV refrigerators. All right, but thank you all so much, and thank you, Paul, for taking the time with us this morning, despite being in the craziness of Montana right now. Um, we thank you for taking the time out of your morning to, to talk with us about refrigerators. Thank you also. All right, well, everybody, have a great day, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.